Hi friends, it's Reverend Laurie Gist for this week's Love Notes, which was supposed to be sent to you on Wednesday, April 7th, but you will get it Thursday, April 8th, because it's been a crazy week. I work several jobs, and one of them um, is with my husband's business that my daughter, oh, I've got a start. Sorry, that was some weird notice that just came up on my Zoom feed about restarting it, but I don't want to do that right now. Anyways, my husband and my daughter have had this portable building shed business for about 20 years. And of course, when he got so sick, my daughter took over both of our locations in Port Charlotte and here in Inverness, but it was just too much for her and the business was really suffering. We closed the store in Port Charlotte. We're just operating the one in Inverness on a part-time basis. And in between her busy captain business, she has a master captain's license and it's her busy season. They have five boats and they are keeping them full. So I've been helping out at the shop with the sheds and at her dive shop and of course the church. So it's been one of those weeks. And we have had this really weird caterpillar infestation at the office. We've always had them at a particular time of year, springtime, these little white furry caterpillars come out. Um, they're not nice caterpillars. They, they sting their fur or their little hairs have a poison on them. If you have a reaction to it, you can get all kinds of welts and blisters and it's, they're just nasty little things. Well, there was a full on infestation at the office. One of our glorious, magnificent oak trees right behind the office, which is just filled with branches and beautiful leaves, were apparently filled with these caterpillars as well. And they covered our office. I mean, literally covered. When they came out of their little tiny nests as these little worm looking things, and they were growing their fur, they just covered like our handrail going into the office, hundreds of them. We had to just shut everything down. Lacey had to order this special spray, which I guess is the only thing that will get rid of them. And it was like, she sprayed everything. The, I mean, the tree, the, the building, the carport, I mean, just everything. And oh my Lord, the next morning, it looked like a massacre. I mean, this is just like something out of a horror movie. I'm like, oh, do we really have to do this? And I swept and I swept and I swept piles of these little creatures. Some of them started coming again and coming again. So she had to respray. I mean, it's just been one of those insane weeks. Well, I ever got everything cleaned out finally, and I'm sitting in the office looking out the window, and I'm seeing a few of them move a little bit, and I'm just watching them, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, we can't have you around here because we have customers, and it's very important to us <laughs> to have a livelihood and take care of our customers and not have any injuries, but I'm watching these little creatures, and I'm thinking to myself, even they have a purpose. I have no idea what it is. I know their purpose is not to aggravate me. It's a higher purpose than that. But they have everything in them that they need to complete whatever purpose God has designed for them to complete. Lacey's been doing research on it because they just fascinate her. But things like that fascinate her. Me, not so much. But I'm watching them. You know, they come out just minutes old. And they are ready to move on to the next plan, to get into a state of cocoon, to form into a moth and start the whole process again. And God has given them every tool they need to be this self-sufficient, including a poison toxin in them that keeps them from becoming annihilated. It's fascinating to me. You know, I think... Human babies aren't even capable of taking care of themselves until they're, what, 20? <laughs> um, but, you know, they're not even walking until sometimes they're two. Potty train, I mean, they're just, they could not climb out of the womb and into a tree and begin to live. It just fascinates me how we have everything we need for the divine purpose that God intends, regardless. And just knowing that, it's such a relief just knowing that I have everything I need. There is a divine discernment in me that knows exactly what 
my mission is, exactly what the plan is, I don't have to be worried about it. I don't have to sweat it. Oh, I do, <laughs> but I don't have to. Innately in me, all the qualities of God. I just love that. We are starting this month of April to look at the power of divine will, that power of divine discernment, that in us that is actually higher than our human self, that in that caterpillar that is actually higher than the caterpillar consciousness. There is in us a divine quality of will. And we simply need to relax and know that it is there. And therein lies the tension of how to accomplish this, knowing that all is well, how not to forge the own trail and push the stream. You know, we're in such a get or done society, goal oriented. And this is nice. That's how we get things done. And that's how we progress and evolve. But when do we decide it's time to rely on the wisdom and the will of God? That's what we're going to explore all month. I won't be seeing you this Sunday because I'm speaking at Unity of, oh, where am I? This Oh, Vero Beach. I'm at Unity of Vero Beach. Janice will be speaking with you. She's kind of carrying on the Easter message. It's going to be very beautiful. She always does such a great job. So I want to give you this poem to think about, this prayer from the women of the chalice, the woman that represents the power of discernment or divine will is Salome. The disciple is James of Zebedee. So take this in this week as we begin to open and trust the divine guidance of God. Now in this moment, I close my eyes and center in that still safe place within me. Here, the outer voices are stilled and I can hear inwardly. Here, I do not listen to this one or to that one, only to spirit. Spirit tells me the truth. Here, I am teachable, open, receptive, obedient, and responsive to your word. No one else can choose for me. I would not want them to. I make my own choices. Envelop me with your grace. Clothe my soul with your wholeness, soundness, boundless love. Oh, greater love. Let my mind and heart wait upon your right hand and your left that I may drink of your cup of wisdom and of love. I place upon the altar of this prayer all that I am, the silent dreams of all my life, the longings of my soul, my goal. I hope the children of my heart, I place them in your care, in your keeping, I cannot choose for them. I give them, all of them, over to you. And now in the stillness of silence, I sense a knowing as clear as lightning and as strong as thunder. And I know, and I know that I know. I am a vessel to a holy purpose. There is no other way for me. I am the spirit of choice. I am Salome, woman of power. Pay attention to God's working guidance in your life. I love you. God loves you. I will see you a week from Sunday. Oh, I'll see you next Wednesday for Wednesday Love Notes, barring there are no more caterpillars. <laughs> Bye-bye.